Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Ooh, pack one, pick one. Opened Nahiri. Definitely gotta try and build around it now. So Red White Warriors is where we want to be. What else? A root Grazer is great for the Landfall Synergies. Some other decent Uncommons. And then anything we can hope to wheel. Not really. Like maybe a Spare Supplies. Maybe the Fury. Ooh, and a second pick, Relic Robber, not a nice rare. Not a warrior, but still a rogue for potential party synergies. Yeah, if you can play a Relic Robber on the play on turn 3, it's pretty hard to beat. Wow, the uh, good cards keep on coming here. Between Journey and Takedown, I think I'm leaning Journey as just a more flexible removal spell. Although takedown being a land, of course, has its upside as well. Sorcerer would be a nice way to fill out our party, although we're not gonna enable the ability too often. And then the Makindi Ox champion would be fine cards to wheel. But we'll go with the journey. This bank has a lot of options. Jerboa, Shelter, Molten Blast are all playable. Uh, in this deck, Jerboa is probably not going to be at its best, since we're not really the Landfall Synergy deck, although we might have a bit of Landfall Synergy. I think I'm liking the Shelter. Just as a flexible protection spell slash land. But I think it's close between all three options here. Let's try the Shelter. And then... We've got a couple options here too. Charger makes sense as a cheap warrior. And we'll probably end up with a few equipments. Blade would be one of the equipment we can pick up in red-white. And then practice tactics is presumably pretty good too when we have a rogue. And we're gonna pick up more warriors. Blade seems like the type of card that we should be able to pick up pretty late. So maybe I should prioritize a charger here instead. Although I think it's still close between charger and tactics. But I do want to make sure I have enough cheap creatures with the party types for any party synergy cards like Journey and future tactics we might pick up. Ooh, wow. Well, if there's ever a sign that the Warrior deck is open, it's a 6-pick Cargan War Leader here. Perfect. Another champion we wouldn't mind. Healer would also make the cuts, but... We're in the perfect lane for the... Warrior deck. Lagak, definitely playable. There's Tormenting Voice, which is also fine. Not sure here. I might just take the creature. Yeah, some drafts are difficult. You need to kind of stay open, see where you end up. Some other drafts, you open Nahiri, you get a, a late war leader, and it's pretty obvious that you should be in red white. I'll take a spare supplies over pressure points. Not the biggest fan of pressure point in general. And then we did wheel Lagak. Could take a wizard as just a cheap wizard for party. Two ones can be pretty awkward if the opponent has a bunch of 1 3 creatures. But presumably we'll have a few equipment in this deck, so cheap creatures are a bit better. And then now I'll take my Tormenting Voice. So our first pack went pretty well. First pick Nahiri, second pick Relic Robber, Journey, and then a late War Leader, so... Just want to pick up more Warriors. We didn't wield those three mana Warriors so far, although there's one of them. Expedition Champion, so... Yeah, all according to plan so far. If we can get a late equipment on the wheel, that would be perfect. And uh, yeah, I'll take a Molten Blast. It's not the most powerful removal spell, but you're 
definitely still gonna play it more often than not. And there we go. 13th pick, Scavenged Blade, right where we want it. Alright, what do we have here? I mean, Parrot Tactician looks pretty great. Uh, so that's probably my pick. Smite the Monsters, Molten Blast are cards we can get later. Same with the uh, second blade. It is tempting to rare draft here because I probably need some more pathways, but I'll try and make the best limited deck we can. Ooh, the swarm is definitely powerful. Not the best in our deck. What do we have here? I guess a stampede's okay. It's just a land we can play as an overrun. Ox we can hope to get a bit later. Same with like these random equipments. But Stampede should be pretty decent. So the healer is more for the cleric deck. Don't mind Shepherd, since we do have quite a few party members. Hellhounds, medium, at least in this deck. Cell Sword we can probably get on the wheel as a two mana warrior. So yeah, let's take the flyer. Colossus also consideration, but I think having a bit of evasion is still important. All right, seems like a good spot to pick up a practiced tactics over Molten Blasts. Pack Beast could also be consideration if we had more party synergy, although so far it's pretty limited to Journey and now the tactics. I guess Shepherds to a lesser extent. That's a pretty late Royal Eruption, fifth pick. Nice two mana removal spell. Although there's a lot of playable cards here, not a Shepherd, Ox, Shelter, even the Electromancer could be good. And... Don't know if we need Hellion here. Doesn't seem super needed. So between Healer and Hazard. There's not that many one toughness creatures we need to kill with Hazards. Couple of rogues maybe. I think I can use an extra two drop creature. Pretty light on two drop creatures so far. And then some cheap warriors here. Ambusher seems great. Banneret could also be an option. I think I preferred Ambusher for now at least. Rage as a pump spell. Probably less important when we have equipment instead. Like when you have equipment, they typically take over the same slots as pump spells would since you don't really have room to play a ton of both. Don't mind a Fury here, can play it as a land most of the time, and every now and then it can uh, make a difference as a way to close out the game, perhaps. Alright, ninth pick. Do I want Raptor? We don't really have any landfall synergies, so it's more of a 3 mana 2 2 flyer in this deck. I don't think it's going to be great. I might want to secure a second blade to make sure we have a few additional equipments. Yeah, Smite the Monsters would also be reasonable since we don't have any yet, but I'm pretty confident we can find another Smite the Monsters later if we really want it. All right, we got a Blade anyway. I might play a third copy, who knows. As long as I get enough cheap creatures to equip, they seem decent with Nahiri as well. Stampede and the uh, Fury are most likely just going to be Lance. Cell Sword Wield, that's fine. Molten Blast Wield. Don't know if I'll play both, but we'll see. And the Ox, definitely playable here. All right, and then for our last pack, we opened Volokut Exploration. 
How good is this in our deck? It's not amazing. But it's still like a slow source of card advantage. It's probably still playable here. And then can hope to wheel an ambusher. Ooh, squad commander. This seems great. Makes a whole bunch of warrior tokens. Not a royal eruption would have been nice, but yeah, not gonna pass up on the commander. So we definitely have enough playables here. Gotta start thinking about making some cuts. Maybe the Lagak doesn't make the final cuts. Maybe three equipment is too many. The wizard's one of our weaker creatures so far. And I might cut a Molten Blasts. And we can choose between another Tactics and Champion, I think. Still not too interested in the healer. So what do we want more? One mana removal or a three mana creature? I think just another warrior is fine. Uh, although I might wield a champion. I think I'll take the tactics and then hope to wield champion. Hoo hoo. Another war leader. I mean, this could have been a royal eruption number three, but it's gotta be the war leader here. I don't think I can risk wheeling it since someone might just randomly take it because it's an uncommon. And then there's a small chance we will tactics. Maybe I'll play Pack Beasts. And now what? Banneret, just a cheap warrior. Kite Sail could be good so as a way to give a vision. Probably don't need a fourth blade or a third blast. Um, I guess a one drop's fine. If I wield the kite sail, I might play it still. Runner would have been great with a kite sail. I mean, it's still potentially good with a triple blade situation. It's a rogue. Or I can just take the two mana warrior with my double war leader Nahiri deck. Rider seems kind of clunky. Yeah, I think I just like the two drop here. Works pretty well with a blade. And then Akum Warrior seems perfect, as kind of a curve topper that we can play as a land. Although I guess Spellcraft would also be okay. This one's pretty close. I think we've got enough playables that just having a land that's also a spell is going to be better overall than like a marginal spell that's may not even make the final cut. And then, I guess if there's ever a deck where we want Resolute Strike, it's this one. Sure. I just want to play as many cheap creatures as possible, and then we'll see how many of these equipments we end up playing. Doesn't look like we're gonna wield that uh, three mana warrior, but that's okay. We've got a decent amount of three drops. I did wield the tactics and the pack beast. I think tactics might just be the pick now. I've got mostly warriors, but a couple rogues, clerics sprinkled in. Tank Beast is also Warrior, but it is a 2 mana 2 1, so it trades off pretty easily. Alright, so I assume I can cut one blade. Then probably don't need spare supplies in this deck since we've got a ton of 2 drops. Then we've got a decent amount of double faced cards here. Don't know if I'm playing the strike. Yeah, the wizard seems kind of weak. It's mostly here for party synergies. 
can probably cut maybe even both Molten Blasts and just play the Tactics instead. And then we'll try the Exploration just for science. Yeah, I don't think I have room for Resolute Strike. Uh, Tormenting Voice is a card I could cut. We do have a decent amount of landfall cards, so if we're flooding in the late game, I could see just playing lands being a, a decent play still. And then we can definitely cut a couple lands here, since we've got so many cards that are likely to be played as lands. So again, when doing the math for the mana base is unlimited, kind of look at every individual double-faced card and think to yourself, how often am I going to play Akum Warrior as an actual Akum Warrior? You can kind of see this as three-fourths of a land, since we're more often than not going to play it as a land, and kind of do the same calculation for every other one. Stampede is kind of in the same boat, this is most often going to be played as a land, so this is another like 75% of a land. Fury, similar boat, also going to be played as a land more often than not. And Shelter is probably 50-50, I would say. So we've got 2.75 lands here with these four, which means that let's round it up to three. So three lands for four spells, which means that if we want to play around 17 lands, which seems reasonable, we've got a couple mana sinks with Ambusher, so I don't think I want to go below 17 necessarily. Then uh, if we count this as three, this is 17, so we can cut three lands pretty much. Now we do have four tap lands, and we do have a relatively low curve, but it's not like we have that many one mana plays outside of Banneret and Charger. So I think that's okay. And uh, yeah, still need to make three cuts. So what are those going to be? I think the Tormenting Voice, again, the same argument. Like, Tormenting Voice you often want to use to discard lands in a late game. But if you have a bunch of landfall cards, playing lands can still be beneficial. Plus we have a few mana sinks here with Ambusher, Blade we can move around. So we've got a lot of ways to spend our mana. A Kick Droiler option, maybe. Bannerets is another mana sink. Yeah, Lagax seems a bit out of place, so that can probably go. And then... One more cut. If we take a look at our creature types, we have two clerics, one rogue, eleven warriors. So, yeah, tactics is probably gonna be dealing two damage most of the time, which is not great, but still cheaper than a Molten Blast. Alright, so we've got two Tactics, one Eruption, one Journey as our main removal spells, and then some of these can sometimes act as removal as well. Kind of regretting not picking up the Kite Sail now, since it would have been a nice way to finish out games in this deck. Maybe would have played it over Makindi Ox, but that's okay. And then, uh, yeah, between red and white mana, I think it's evenly split, so 7-7, seven, seven, and then the dual phase lands are also 50-50. And we've got a fine opening hand. Are we just going to curve 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop? I think so. And keep Stampede in hand. Oh no, they've got a Charger. That can jump in front of my Relic Robber, potentially. Opponents also on Red-White Warriors. I think I do offer the trade, because clearing the Charger means maybe opening up a path for the Relic Robber. And then just play Ambusher. Uh, 
All right, they've got the rubble forts. So I can play my third land. And then attack with Ambusher, which I can threaten to pump. Poem probably just takes one. And then we'll play Exploration. It's going to be difficult to connect with a robber this game, I'm afraid. Take four. For now, I'll start by playing the lands. Another land, so that's going to be one damage. And then just play champion, I think. And the next turn, if we draw lands, we can potentially play robber and equip it. Ooh, Stampede. So if I trade here, this kills two of my creatures. This seems like a decent double block. They only get to kill one of my two creatures. And then take four. Found a land, so yeah, we get to make the play we described. Probably want to play land first, see if exploration changes anything. Ooh, commander. Oh man, this is rough. I guess we'll play commander. Can attack first. Although they might block now. Yeah, Commander's a bit too good to pass up here. A hasty sneaking guide and a Relic Axe. They could have used this first if their plan was to attack, but they might just stay back now. Still attacking. Yeah, trade isn't great for me here since I get to take out two creatures. Now I get to... I guess they can move the the axe to their guide as well, so they can still potentially block my equipped robber. Maybe I should just trade then. Sure. And they get to kill my ambusher. Does make my stampede a bit worse, but I don't think we're Necessarily trying to race when we have exploration providing card advantage, like I'm probably just playing Stampede here. And there's a blade. So if I play robber and equip it, they can just trade it away for the guide. So that doesn't seem great. Can just play ambusher. Play the blade. And we can maybe wait until we can pump the team with the bannerets. And we'll send in the token. Yeah, I suppose playing robber and just not attacking and then next turn pumping with bannerets would have been decent. They've got their own squad commander. Yeah, that haste ability is definitely irrelevant here. Shelter's decent, although I can also play it as a land for exploration. Although now it seems like a good time to hold it as a spell. 
Yeah, I don't know if I can be too aggressive here. Although I can also sit back, because otherwise we're just going to die to the sneaking guide. So, gotta walk a fine line. How about a robber? Put the blade on its attack. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And then they can double block or chump. I think I'm happy with that trade. That's fine too. Ooh, wow. That was quite the top deck. Okay, so now equipped warriors have double strike. Five for double strike. Guess we're jumping. And then uh, they can still move the axe second main if they want to. I'm gonna have to try and use shelter as kind of a defensive way to uh, block their double striker. I think I'm jumping with Banneret, but it's close, because it's a useful pump ability for sure. Yeah, the problem here is that they can use the sneaking guide to potentially uh, kill me. Warrior. I think we just have to play as a land here. Like, a 4-5 Trample doesn't do all that much for me. In the face of a 5-power Double Striker. Another land. Yeah, I just don't have any good attacks. But this block is also probably not going to be great for me. Right, let's see what we draw. Lance. They didn't move the equipment. Yep. Second so trade robber for Blade Master, and then I can take six. We can also trade shelter for Blade Master essentially, I guess. That's maybe the play, just take six down to three. Although, then every one of their creatures with the guide is pretty much lethal. Yeah, probably just have to trade here. Alright, so we'll block here, block here. Gives us protection from white, the blade doesn't fall off. We kill the warrior token, I don't take any damage. And I'm still left with the token. It's probably my best bet. Yeah, now the opponent only has three powered creatures, so the guide can make them unblockable at least. All right. More lands. Probably just equip the token so it can trade off and keep the three two. Not really in a position to attack. Yeah, gotta hope our opponent draws a few lands. Oof, Stampede. Well, that's technically a land, I guess. 
Uh, so I can trade, trade, take seven down to two, and then hope to top deck a creature. Yeah, that sounds right to me. All right, still have another shot at a creature. That's a creature. Close game. And now we get to leverage our exploration. Although we don't get to attack, sadly. If we had another blocker, we could potentially close out the game here. Put on to tanks, because they would probably die to a land next turn. Alright. And there's Nahiri, perfect. So we want to attack first. And then Nahiri can make a token. Or we can just minus... Let's see. Yeah, Nahiri only deals damage to creatures or planeswalkers. So we would probably have to... Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll probably just make a token and move the equipment to the token. Well, that was quite a comeback. Um, sure. Play Shelter turn one. Turn two, Charger. I guess I might as well play Charger turn one then. Yeah, I could equip it here, but I think I would rather just play my 3-drop on curve. So, probably want to get the Tactician out there, and then next turn we can clear a path to set up a nice attack. Opponent on red green. I will be taking the damage. Alright, seems like pretty straightforward. Eruption the champion. And then we can play the blade as well on the charger and attack. Just double checking. Yeah, that seems good. If we draw lands, that's good with exploration. If we draw spells, that's good. We draw lands. And this will grow up to a 5-4, so they probably just trade for Baloth and then take 3. Or they can trade for both, I guess, and then we still get to deal 3 to their face. So I could just attack with the Charger. And leave the Tactician back for now. That seems reasonable too. And then I think this turn I'm just playing the Champion and holding on to the Exploration for now. Then the question is, do I play the land or do I hold it until after we play Exploration. I do have quite a few 2-drops I could play off the Landfall trigger, so I think I hold it for now. I 
And then just gotta make sure we leave our planes untapped. Rabbit Bite takes out Tactician. Can they afford to attack is a question. They can. Ooh, Tactics. That could be pretty decent, although I guess it only deals two at the moment. Not enough to kill the Ambusher, so that our plan is probably to block and pump if we attack with Champion. So we should just attack with Charger once again. But uh, let's see what we hit off Exploration first. Just a land, so that's going to deal one to their face. Trade seems great for me here, because we get to kill the Baloth as well. Alright, 4-5 Akum Warrior. Interesting. So I could equip, attack, and then if they block tactics. And if they take it, they would just be dead. It's unlikely that they would take it. But I think I'm okay trading since we have the exploration. If we draw any creature, we can equip with a blade. So like a grindy game, I think, favors me. Could have also played this as a land, but I think there's a good chance we end up casting it as a spell when the opponent's at 8. And then maybe next turn I'll play it as a land if we don't draw anything. Alright. Probably have to trade for the runner here. Although if they attack with both, they could just be dead if they don't have another creature to play. Because we can hit them for foreign and fury. So we'll see what they do. Alright, attacks with both. So if they have removal or another blocker here, or if they draw into one with a runner, it's bad if we take it. I think I'm just supposed to trade for the runner and then again try and win a grindy game with exploration. But it's definitely a close call. There is a small chance we could just win. If my opponent has two lanes, I think I'm gonna just trade. Ooh, we could still potentially steal this one. Now my opponent could also have a pump spell here, but... Hit them with a robber. Opponent gets a token, and we'll pass, and then Fury next turn is lethal. Another blade. They can hit me for 7 here with the token. Down to 1. Equips the token, makes sense, hits me for 4. And they have a 3-2 back on defense. But as it turns out, fling for the win. That was a pretty epic game, all things considered.
All right. We have three double-faced cards in hand. So more lands than it might seem at first glance. Um, yeah, this seems keepable. Probably play Stampede as a tapped land and keep Shelter in hand for the time being. Although we draw a Plains. Do I play a Coom Warrior now as a land? I think so. Stampede could be pretty good with the Squad Commander tokens. Want to try and keep the healer alive since we have Commander. Linval is a good one though. So... Probably can't afford to attack and then... I might just play Shelter, Tapped and Banner it and then hold Stampede in hand. And then we can go Commander into maybe Shepherd into Stampede. Pungesu. Scry 1 since they have two wizards. Make two tokens, and then next turn Shepard can block Linvala. And then the pump ability on Banneret could also come in handy. That's fine. A royal eruption is also not bad. I could eruption plus champion and then hit them for quite a bit. I think I like that. And if they want to sack Limvala, I guess it's fine by me. And then we have two options, Shepard to gain a bit of life, put a 3-4 flyer in play, or Stampede to just deal a ton of damage. And just pumping with Banner, it's already pretty strong here. Opponent's forced to stay back. Even have the option of Ox plus play Stampede as a land to tap down Limvala. Opponent's got 4 mana, probably like an Into the Royal type effect. Um, so probably just attack with Champion, play Shepherd. But I would be fine with a trade here. Alright, there's Into the Royal as expected. Well, our opponent's slowly falling behind on board here. Sure need to take care of Shepard.
It's pretty strong. We've got a lot of options. How much damage are we threatening with Stampede? That's uh, 12, 13 damage. I mean, maybe I just Stampede here. Seems like a pretty good window for it. Alright, I guess it's good enough. On the play, and... Yeah, this seems totally fine. Got to decide between Shelter and Stampede on turn one. I think I like keeping Shelter over Stampede this time. We have Ox as a 5-mana play, and Shelter's nice to protect the champion, which is going to be pretty big thanks to the Cell Sword pumping it. Opponent with the 1-1 one, one flyer, also on red-white warriors. Opponent takes it. We'll just play champion. If they blocked, I could have used Shelter to give this protection from red and then keep up tactics, although I don't think I necessarily need to kill the Cleric here. And then we'll just take four. Hope they don't kill any of my creatures now. Wizard. So they've got Cleric. Warrior and Wizard, that's a lot of times for a party. Picked up Blade. So I assume that if I attack with both, my opponent trades the Wizard for the Cell Sword, since it also shrinks down the Champion. So then I could use Shelter to protect the Cell Sword and keep up tactics to maybe kill the Bug Catcher. I think that's better than playing Blade here. I can play Blade, put it on the Champion. If they block, I can Shelter and then keep Tactics for later, maybe? Yeah, I guess it's still reasonable. It seems easier to leverage Tactics later than Shelter. So our opponent's down to 11. If we draw land, we can play Ox. If we draw spells, we can probably cast them. Ooh, that's quite a spell. So... Now here we can minus to deal two damage somewhere, so that can take out the catcher. So I don't think I need to... Although I guess she would end up dying to the cleric. I could also make a token pre-combat, so that the champion keeps the bonus if they somehow kill the cell sword. If they have their own tactics, they probably just kill champion, and then Nahiri makes a token and I can equip the blade to the token second main. So I think we just smash, probably see a tactics here. Yep. So if I had used Nahiri to kill the catcher main phase one, then I could have prevented tactics killing the three toughness creature here. Um, 
but then Nahiri still would have died to the cleric. So th this seems fine. Three one can trade for the catcher, and hopefully they can kill Nahiri. Can only use tactics on attacking or blocking creatures, so I couldn't kill their creature in response. Five four haste. That's a nice draw. Second so jump to keep Nahiri alive. Seems worthwhile. I will never give up. So I can play the ox now. Sell sword I'm fine to attack with. And then make another token we can equip. Alternatively, I can minus Nahiri, killing the catcher. Equip Sellsword. Hit for 5, put him to 3. Tactics can kill Cleric. I think I just like attack here, plus Nahiri, play Ox. So we can potentially trade off for the Minotaur. This is Warrior, this is Cleric, so they could still have another Tactics to deal 4 to the Ox after I block with it. Uh, that works. Exploration, not the best right now. This ability to move the equipment is being very useful. Do we even tactics here? They don't seem to have a pump spell. Yeah, I guess we'll get rid of the flyer. My tactics only deals two damage, so I'm not gonna kill anything enormous with it. So we'll start by playing the planes, see what we hit with exploration. Land. I think I minus two now. Could also minus three. Kill the cell sword. Attack, and then it would go to one from the exploration. If they take it, and then I can move the blade back. Maybe I shouldn't risk Nahiri missing with a minus two. Yeah, that's fair. So if I minus, put them to one, they could kill my token and then kill Nahiri potentially. Although then they're pretty much dead to any lands with exploration, so I think that's fine. Tactician. Bannerets. So I can attack, opponent has to block, otherwise they die. Help me remake 
Well, Nahiri was pretty awesome this game. Oh, I guess we could have minused again, but you know, opponent had a card in hand, you never know what they could have. I guess we'll go for it now. Seems fine. Another warrior mirror. Don't hate using the tactics to clear the charger here if we get the chance. Opponent takes it. Now I probably don't want a Tactics, because I would lose Charger and we have War Leader to pump it. Put it on red-green instead. Ooh, Robber. I mean, it just trades for Chargers, the issue. So we'll just play War Leader. I will still offer the trade for my Charger and theirs, because I just want a clearer path for Robber. And their turn is removal on my 3-3. Three, three. And that opens up the door for Robber. Drew another War Leader too, but this seems slightly better. I mean, yeah, I think I probably still play it here, right? I don't have double white, so I can go War Leader plus tactics next turn necessarily, but if I draw any land I can maybe pump with Bannerets. Is the Relic Robber gonna steal this game? Gotta send a message. Yeah, I guess we can use tactics to kill GOP if they block Robber here and then still play Ambusher. That's one of the downsides of tactics, having to wait until the opponent's blocking. So that's what makes it a little weaker in aggressive decks. But on the other hand, it's very cheap to keep up. So if you're drafting a low curve deck, it's relatively inexpensive to have access to tactics. So now I could pump with Bannerets. Turn this into a 3-3, three, three, would still trade for champion. Um, but I guess it's fine. Opponent can absorb 2 damage, still takes 2. We trade robber for champion, and they're still on under pressure from the construct token. Alternatively, I can play war leader, although that doesn't set up any attacks this turn. Could just send ambusher. I guess it's also reasonable. And then just trade for champion, keep the robber alive. I think I kind of like trading creatures when they're under pressure from the construct token, because it makes it less likely that they can quickly kill me and kind of turn the game around. So I think I like attack all and pump with bannerets. Force them to trade. And we also deal two more damage, so they only have a few turns to draw out of it here. Ooh, Green Warden. 
All right, that does uh, stabilize them nicely. So makes me happy I made that attack. Royal Eruption does indeed go face. So that's probably what that's going to do here. Probably just wait for next turn. How much is kicker? Seven total. So we're pretty far off. I could do it now. I mean... We're probably not going to kick it anytime soon. Although it's not like they're going to make me discard here. If I do it now, next turn I can pump with Bannerets and maybe kill them. Yeah, I guess that's a reasonable argument. Equip the token. I will take two damage. Although the tokens are pretty interesting to play with, given that there's so many equipment going around. So now if I attack with everyone, and if nothing, they would just be dead. And if they pump, they can trade, but it would still be a trade because they can use Bannerets. Yeah, I mean, this seems fine. Could also just wait two turns and let them die to the token. I'm not sure if there's many life gain spells in green I need to be worried about, but... Yeah, they seem pretty dead. Sweet. But uh, yeah, Nahiri, pack one, pick one, and then red-white seems pretty open. Picked up some nice removal spells. And also saw the value of these double-faced cards. Got to play the warrior once. Got to play Stampede once, which won us the game. And we also played Fury once to win the game. And let's see, we also cast Shelter uh, twice, I believe, so it's kind of like we expected. At the start of the draft, I said Shelter is going to be a land about half the time. I think we cast it twice. Fury, I said, was going to be a land about 75% of the time, and I think we cast it once. Stampede, I think we cast once, maybe twice, and was a land for the majority of the time. And same with a Warrior, which we only cast once I believe, so that's kind of how you need to treat these double face cards. Some are going to be lands more often than not. And then the tactics wasn't amazing in the deck just because we had mostly warriors, but it was still a nice cheap removal spell to have access to. Two blades worked out pretty well I think. Got to win a few games with Robber, got to see exploration in action. So yeah, we got to pretty much see every single card Let's crack some packs. Aura, Skyclave, Hierophant, pack one, pick one. What are we looking at here? Vanquish, Soul Removal. Scion is kind of a payoff card for the Black White deck. I don't think you're going to be playing this outside of Black White very often. Maybe in like black-green if you've got the 1-3 that gains life with landfall. But that seems like a pretty weak card outside of the synergy here. And then Aura could also be a fun pack one, pick one to try and build around. Maybe try and get Scion on the wheel. And uh, you could give that a shot. Not sure how reliable first picking Aura is going to be to try and build around it. It does seem like a pretty risky strategy. But the payoff is definitely there if you get the Uncommon Vial as a Sacrifice Engine and some other clerics. I'll take the best rare in the set. Is there an agreement yet on the best rare in the set? Is it just a red-green, multicolor, Avenger of Zendikar? Probably, right? Captain's nice for the party decks. And uh, another Vanquish the Week. Morog. If you haven't seen Morog's animation yet, it's uh, definitely good for a, a nice laugh. I mean, it's definitely a powerful card in Limited 2. 
it's only a single color, a bit expensive at 6 mana, doesn't necessarily catch you back up if you're behind, but definitely an excellent way to close out the game. So it would be my first pick here, Skeleton, nice incentive for the Black Green Counters deck. Some other playables. Best Mythic in the set. Just had a nice draft with Nahiri, although I don't think Nahiri is necessarily the best Mythic in the set. Uh, there's got to be something better. I guess there's like the 4 mana 4-4 four, four Dragon, the Leyline Dragon or Tyrant. That one's pretty good. Not sure if there's any Mythics that uh, can beat it. Ashaya is very good too, yeah. Nissa. Nissa's good too, don't get me wrong, but it is a two-color card. So I think I would rather open a Leyline Tyrant over a Nissan pack one, pick one. And then some other okay cards, but nothing too exciting. Well, there's Omnath, Speak of the Devil. Haven't crafted the four-color Omnath deck in standard as you can tell. But uh, yeah, in this pack, I mean, both of these uncommons are pretty good, especially the rogue. Like, if you can draft a nice blue-black rogue deck that can reliably put eight cards in the opponent's graveyard, this is definitely one of the better dual-faced creatures to play out. So I think it's actually close between Omnath and the rogue, pack one, pick one. But if you haven't tried it yet, Trying to build a four-color green deck with Omnath is probably too much fun to pass up on. Kazandu Mammoth is also excellent. Definitely first pick worthy here, and there's not much that competes with it. Alright, those were some nice packs to break down. So... We got the value from the draft and the value from cracking some packs and discussing our picks. So for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.